Um, the, the last question here is, someone said, I've been called to be an evangelist. And by the mercies of God, I've already started hosting crusades. He said, but I'm now thinking that I have not been ordained yet. Is it okay to keep going on with my father's business without being ordained? Or should I go back for ordination before I continue? What <laughs> is ordination? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, first of all, if you are serving God or especially winning souls, from John 15, he has already ordained you. Yes, sir. Amen. There is divine ordination and there is systemic ordination. There is administrative ordination. There is from heaven and there is church platform or ministry platform or ministerial association platform. And we have a number of them. Ordination at the church level or ordination by an association, a ministry association that you belong to. And it is recommended that you belong to a group of people that you relate with in ministry. Now, we can see a route to that in Acts of the Apostle, chapter 13. They were praying together, apostles and teachers. And then the word came from heaven, separate unto me, Barnabas and Paul, for the assignment that I have for them. So, they fasted, they prayed, they laid hands on them to ordain them. Ordination is about being separated for an assignment. It's not a title, like we have always thought to be. You can be ordained and still maintain your simplicity. In their time in the old, I mean, the New Testament, they call themselves brother, brother Paul, brother Peter. But today, some people can get angry if you don't call him by the title. Very angry and in full. If it's three, you must mention the three. Amen. Humorously speaking, um, some years back, somebody came up to share a testimony. And uh, he said, when Mr. Abuye prayed for me, I got my healing. People in church. So I climbed up the stage and I asked them, am I Mrs. Abuye? <laughs> I said, come on, clap for that brother right now. He called me by my right name. I'm a mister. Praise God. Till Billy Graham died, in many quarters we are calling him Mr. Graham. Mr. Graham. Mr. Copeland. Kenneth Copeland. And that is even fair enough. You know what they are calling Jesus? Jesus! No ceremony. And he will still answer them. He will still answer them. Amen. I was in um, an occasion a few years ago at our National Christian Center. And uh, the person coordinating said, oh, uh, Pastor Abio is here. Let him come and do this. And he says, Bishop, Bishop. I got there. I said, it's my joy that Brother David is taking the offering today. He doesn't take anything from you. Ordination, good. Title for courtesy. But in case they don't give it to you, they don't call you, don't kill yourself. Don't change your countenance. Don't sit like a frog already for the... How can somebody be calling me you know, below my standard? I have to defend my level. You know, so somebody said, well, don't go to where you are not celebrated. <laughs> what celebration are you looking for? And some people, if you don't recognize them, you are in trouble. They will even confront you. You didn't recognize me. You recognize me, but you didn't recognize me. <laughs> what will you do with men's recognition in the face of God's grace upon your life? We have to fight this especially in new generation. There are people today who say, yeah, except you are become a bishop, nobody will recognize you. So, without following the requirement for becoming a bishop, he makes himself one. Somebody is pastoring the church of 30 people, is a bishop. Why? He wants to be in the class of the people. Some years ago, 
I attended a crusade, a very huge crusade, and I was invited to sit where I sat. And then somebody else came and came and sat next to me. So the protocol came to me. That means that's not your level. Go to your level. It's better, like Jesus said, stay where you are and be elevated to where you become. If you stay at the back, stretching your neck, be glad you are doing that. God is watching, he's testing. That's part of the patience thing we talk about. When your time comes, they will bring you to the forefront. So for ordination again, um, it's all right, but you're already ordained by God. The assignment, the result, is a confirmation of your ordination. But sometimes also for social reasons, for administrative issues, they may require a certificate. Sometimes you want to travel, they're asking for your certificate and all of that. They all help to authenticate and validate that you have been formally, administratively, socially ordained. So it's not out of place to have that. And because we live in a very diff, you know, comple complex society, of course there are some places if you don't answer or present yourself with a title, they may look down at you. So you are not being proud. You are just fulfilling the obligation of social requirement so you can have your appropriate place. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. Thank you. God is a good God. If you have more questions, please get them across to us. You are so important. There is no question you ask that will not take time to attend to. Like I said, through our various um, platform from time to time. Let me assure you, wherever we have reached, you will not only reach there, you will go beyond. I pray this prayer for you based on John 14, 12. Jesus said, because you believe in me, the works I do, you shall do. And greater. And greater. What work will you do? Let me hear you, please. The desire of any biological father is that his children would do beyond him. Stretch your hands here. You will do beyond us. You will see beyond us. You will operate beyond us. You will see actions beyond us. You will produce beyond us. While Jesus was here, his shadow was not healing the sick. But the shadow of Peter was healing the sea. Why Jesus was here, handkerchiefs and apron were not taken from him. The nearest that happened is that they touched the hem of his garment. And so, John 14, 12 came to pass. I decree again, you will get to greater heights. You will do greater exploits. You will see beyond what we see. You will climb beyond where we climb. You will do more than you ever saw or hear us do. In the name of Jesus. Whatever challenge that you are facing, I declare that it's all over. It's all over. It's all over. Diver needs that you have come with, as you are gone from here, the needs will be supernaturally met. For those of us who may not have clarity yet about your calling, I declare that before this year runs out, there will be clarity of purpose for you. In the name of Jesus. Any ministry that may be going through any form of turbulence, I declare that the calmness of the Holy Spirit come upon you right now. As the storm rose on the sea, Jesus declared, peace be still. I declare upon you, peace be still. Amen. Upon your ministry, peace be still. Amen. Upon your assignment, peace be still. Amen. It shall be well with you. Amen. It shall be well with you. Amen. If you are covered by any cloud, I command the cloud to shift for you. Amen. If you are filled with what looks like darkness around you, I declare a new day for you. Amen. This prayer is extended to those who are watching us from anywhere across the globe, live 
or may be watching this channel later in the day or in the week or in the month or whatever time it comes your way, the same effect is produced in your life. You will do well in ministry. You will not run away from ministry. You will not be frustrated in ministry. It is well with you. We will be hearing your testimonies. And that will be loud and clear. In the name of Jesus. At a point Moses was thrown to the backside of the mountain. But suddenly. He was moved back to the palace. He was moved back as leader of three million people. You may have been cast down. I declare you are rising again. By the word of the Lord you have received. In teaching. In the enlightenment, I decree that they will all produce for you. In Jesus' precious name. Give thanks to God as you raise your hand. Thank him for.